Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to give you an example of how we can use Huffman encoding to compress this string of text, Big Bob Bites Bananas. Now, before we begin, we should just be aware that between each word here is a space, so we're going to have to encode that as well. Now, the first thing we need to do when we are uh, looking at compressing this string of text is find the frequency of each character. And the goal of the Huffman tree is to find the shortest possible representation for the most frequently repeating parts of the, uh, the, the text or the phrase that we are encoding. However, if something only comes up once or twice, like this E only appears once, we can get away with a fairly long representation for that because uh, we're not going to be repeating it in our uh, text very often. So we're going to need to look at, for each character, what is the frequency? And I've got that here. So um, we, I just went through each character as it was. So I looked at the B, there were five Bs, two Is, there's one G, uh, there were three spaces. Then we've got one O, one T, one E, two Ss. Bites and bananas, three A's all in bananas, and two N's again also both in banana. And um, the total there is 21, and that's a good little sanity check. You add those up, if you get the same uh, length as your string, then you know you haven't missed any. Okay, so now that we've got our um, character frequencies, we can start building up our Huffman tree. And this is how we do it we start off, we look through this chart, and we find the items with the lowest frequencies first, okay? So G, O, T, and E all have the lowest frequencies. So we're gonna write those at the bottom of our tree and uh, we're gonna give ourselves plenty of space. We start bottom up. Um, so start in the bottom right and we're gonna go, we're gonna say we've got a G. And uh, so that's fine, we can cross that off. And we've got an O. Okay. And we've got a T. And we've got an E, okay? And what we do is we need to combine these into pairs. So starting at the right-hand side, we build up pairs into uh, a little tree. And what I mean by that is um, we connect them together and we work out their combined total. So in this case, the combined frequency of those two was two, okay? And then we go on to our next pair where the combined total is going to be also two because for each of these characters, we had a frequency of one. Now, if I had an extra, let's say I had five characters all with a frequency of one, um, I would just have that here, and I couldn't pair it with anything, so I'd just leave it for now. I would just wait, we'd come back to it. And you'll see an example of that in a minute. Okay, so I've done my first, my lowest level of frequency, so I'm gonna move on to my next level of frequencies, which are the, the I, which had two, S and N, all of which had two. Now I'm gonna write these physically higher up in my um, in my little hierarchy in my tree. So um, these were all like the one levels. Uh, and now I'm gonna put my two levels kind of here. So I'm gonna uh, start off with my I. Okay, so I've done my I. Uh, what else did I have? I, I had an S and I had an N. Here's gonna be our, our um, unpaired item. And again, I do exactly the same thing. Starting working sort of from the right hand side, I start pairing them. So S and I has a combined total of four. And N, I just have to leave there for now, because I haven't got anything to pair it with. Okay, so let's go through and do the next level. Uh, and that's going to be my my space and my A, uh, which are both three. So I'm going to work at sort of like my next level up. Um, so let's see. Let's go with space. So I'm going to put space here. And uh, that's that one. And A. Okay, so that's my A gone. And uh, I, again, working from the right hand side, I need to do some pairing. Well, this N is still unpaired. So we're going to pair the N and the space. The combined total for that is going to be N was two, space is three. So it's going to be five. And the A is now unpaired. So we, you know, we just leave it there for now. And then we go to our next level. And the only one we haven't yet done is uh, the B at five. So I'm gonna put a B up here. And again, I've got to sort of combine now uh, together my A and my B, which has a combined frequency of five and three, which is eight. Okay, so I've got all of my um, characters now into my diagram. Uh, now we just go right back to the right-hand side again and we do another level of pairing. So 
2 and 2, we're going to pair those to a combined frequency of 4. Um, 4 and 4, uh, I can do a combined frequency of 8. I could look at pairing uh, these sides, but um, that would give me a combined frequency of 9, and I want to go for the lowest combined frequencies that I can. So 4 and 4 gives me 8. Okay, now I've got an interesting one, because this 5, I could pair it with this 8, or I could compare it with that eight, and they're equal. Um, but the premises always work from the right-hand side. So I'm gonna, you know, I got here first, as it were. So I'm gonna go eight and five, which combined together is 13. And so my final pairing is eight and 13, which is 21, which again is our total frequency, if you remember. We had uh, 21 characters in total. So we've created our Huffman tree. OK, fantastic. Next thing to do is we need to actually label the branches. And this is really easy. All we do is every left branch, we're going to label zero. So all of these are left branches where I go to the left from a node. And all of my right branches, I'm going to label one. So that's all the way down the right. I've also got a right branch here. I've got a right branch here a right branch here and a right branch here. Okay, and from this tree, I can now get an encoding for every one of these characters. So let's uh, write that up maybe at the top. So let's go for character and encoding. Okay, and let's start here on the right hand side. So for the character B, our encoding, we start at the root, this is our root. And uh, we just work down the path that gets us to the character we're interested in. So for the B, it was zero, zero. So the binary encoding is going to be zero, zero. OK, then the A was zero, one. OK, then the next one we had was SP, which I went one. I had to go to the right. So one, zero, zero. So for um, SP or space, it is one, zero, zero. For N, it is one, zero, one. For S, it's one, one, zero, zero. For I, it's one, one, zero, one. For E, it's one, 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 zero, zero. For T, it's one, 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 zero, one. For O, it's one, 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 O. Or zero, I should say. And for G, it's one, 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 one. And that's our encoding for each one of our characters. Now notice, the principle has held that the most significant or, or the most frequent character has the smallest binary representation, whereas the least frequent characters have the longest representations. These are each going to take five bits to store, whereas uh, B and A, the, the most frequent characters, take only two, two bits each. OK, so that's how we create our Huffman tree and how we create our encoding for each character from the Huffman tree, which we call the dictionary. So now that we've got our Huffman tree in our dictionary, we can now use the dictionary to encode our original message using our dictionary representation. So Big Bob Bites Bananas is going to be 0, 0 for B, Big 1, 1, 0, 1, G, one 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 space one zero zero and then bob and so on i'm going to complete this okay and there is our encoding so that's my uh b o uh no b i g space b o b space uh big bob uh b I-T-E-S space bytes 
B-A-N-A-N-A-S, bananas. Okay, that's the encoding. So let's just look at how many uh, characters, or sorry, how many bits we've used to encode that. 67. 67 bits to encode our message. Now, if we think about using 7-bit ASCII, our original message had 21 characters, if you remember. So if we had 21 times 7 bits per character, if we're assuming basic ASCII, that would be 147 bits for the original, but only 67 bits compressed. As you can see, that's a significant reduction of about 45% of the original size. Now, it's not quite as simple as that, because in reality, we have to also um, transmit with our encoded compressed data, we have to encode our dictionary as well. So we're obviously gonna need a byte for every character we send, because we need to know what it translates to at the other end, plus the variable number of bits for each byte. So all of that data needs to be sent along with our encoded message. And that can actually result in quite a significant increase, especially if you've used lots of different letters and a not very long string. But if we have um, quite a long piece of text, and these don't have to be individual characters, this could be uh, pairs of characters that come up quite often, like T and H, or C and H, and things like that. You can compress the pairs, or whole words potentially, um, and then you can compress those as these, uh, you know, in a, in a much more efficient format, and you end up with a, a, a dictionary that is proportionally not that big compared to the message that's being sent, and that's where you get your greatest um, encoding benefits. Now we need to see how would we actually use this to decode a message. Okay, so here is my binary string that's been encoded using this Huffman tree, and uh, we need to decode that into a message. And one of the first things you'll think is, I don't even know when a, a character starts and ends. There's no obvious way of knowing. It's because they're not fixed bit, bit widths. So it's not like we have seven bits per character like we do in ASCII. We could have two bits for some characters. We could have three bits for other characters. So how on earth are we going to break this down into a meaningful string? Well, let's go through it and show how it works. It's actually surprisingly easy. All you need to do is you start at the beginning of your string and you go to your root and you just follow all the bits through until you hit a character. We call that a leaf. So let's start here. So I've got a zero. So if I go to my root and I go to zero, I get here. So I'm not at a character yet, but then I've got another zero which gets me here, and that does get me to a character. Zero, zero gets me to the B. So this zero, zero is a B. So uh, let's now try the next one. So I've got an I, sorry, I've got a one even. <laughs> one, another one, another one, another one, a zero. Ah, that's got me to a character. So that must be where I finish, and that's an O, and that's a Bob. So now let's start my next one. I start right back up to the top, uh, and I'm on a zero again, which gets me here. Another zero gets me here, so that gets me to um, back to that B. So I start again at my root with a one, so I go one, zero, zero, and I've landed at a space, so this must be a space. I'm back here at this one, so let's start again. Root, let's go one, Okay, one, it's got me here. Okay, zero, yep, uh, a one gets me down here to an I. So this is an I, and I start back up here again at my root. I've got a one, a one, a zero, and a zero. That gets me to an S, so I stop there, and that's an S. I've got another one, zero, zero, so that's another space. And uh, now I've got another zero, a zero, that's got me to a B, so that's another B. One, one, zero, one has got me down to an I. And finally, let's start again, I've got a one, 
a one. Uh, I'm losing track of ones. Another one, a one, and a one gets me all the way to the bottom, gets me to the G. So this string is decoded as Bob is big, which does make sense because we know that Big Bob bites bananas. So there you go, that's how we can take a, um, a string of text, encode it into a Huffman tree, which we then use to build a dictionary. And from that dictionary, we can then encode any message we like and we can decode uh, from there as well.